Hi, I'm Joanne Banco from Let's Go Sew. Have you ever looked around and, and wished you had some, some good ideas for um, dressing up your home decor? Today, I've got a really fun technique for you. I'm going to show you how to do free motion thread painting on printed home decor fabric. So let me um, show you the sample that I've got here. What I did is I took a printed fabric. This one had a nice motif of birds on it, and I separated them out, drew uh, just a slight margin around it, and then attached it to a piece of stabilizer. Now, you want to secure this because when you're going to see in a minute when we go over to the machine, you're going to need to keep this in place. So pinning works fine if you want to use um, a sticky spray, temporary sticky spray, that works as well. So either way. You definitely, though, want to put it on a tearaway type stabilizer because you want to make, make sure you can get this off really easily. So in this technique, what we're going to do is we're going to just thread the machine, use a standard straight stitch, but we're going to lower the feed dogs, and we're literally going to just sketch over this. So I want you to know this is a perfect, perfect beginner technique. It takes no free motion skill. It takes no advanced artist skills whatsoever. We're simply going to take what the artists already did when they created the fabrics, and we're going to literally color over it. So very much like you would color in a coloring book. And in fact, just like if you learned when, as a child, it's okay to color outside the lines. It's okay to color outside the lines on this too. So um, look at what I did here on the birds. On the birds, I did just a little bit of accent stitching and I kept pretty much within uh, the areas that, that were colored. And I took thread colors that, that were very similar in the color but had a little bit more brightness and a little bit more boldness. So as far as supplies, you wanna gather your, your fabric, go shopping for a nice print. You wanna gather the, the stabilizer. Um, and then uh, consider what, what threads you're going to use. Now, we're also going to need to use a specialty presser foot. So I've brought two here today. One is a standard uh, darning foot. They just call it a darning foot, designed for free motion stitching. And then the second one is an open toe quilting foot. And that's the one that I'm actually going to use. Now, I want you to look at both samples. You can see here the raised technique. I'm going to show you how I did that. It's a trapunto effect. But it also is very beautiful if you do um, your free motion stitching and decorate your base fabric and then decorate a motif and then simply lay it on top. These actually came from two totally different prints of fabric and I just married the two together and placed that on and you'll see how, how I attach it when I do that. Okay, so uh, again, step one, draw a margin. You are gonna lose a little bit of your motif when you do that because you wanna have a, about a half of an inch surrounding that and um, let's go ahead and go over to the machine. Grab my foot. So this foot has its own shank, so I'm gonna screw that on. So again, I've just, I've got some decorative thread in here. I've got um, white, uh, lightweight thread, so like embroidery thread in the bobbin. And I've got my machine set for a straight stitch. And what I need to do now is lower the feed dogs because this is all about free motion. So I'm gonna be the mover and shaker here with, with forming that stitch. So touch this little key there and that will automatically lower the presser foot. So stitch length, stitch width, none of that matters. It's all controlled by me. All right, so I'm gonna grab this piece that I've already got stabilized and I'm just simply going to show you how I fill this in and add some of that, um, that color. Now, just again, is very forgiving. Um, some people like to wear um, free motion gloves when they do this, but you're not trying to do anything really pretty. You're just trying to create some color, create some texture, create some accents. When I'm done there, I can tie that area off a little bit, clip the thread. I've got a knee lift on this machine, so it allows me to lift my presser foot with my um, knee and lower it with my knee and that way that gives me an extra you know like I, almost like a third hand so again i'm just going to do a little bit of decorative stitching on there just add some some texture you could add detail lines in where there are no detail lines if you want to you could also um, you know, outline it, you could do more, you could do less. The beauty of this is that you do a little bit at a time and then take a look and see you know, where do you wanna add more color, where do you wanna add a little bit more depth, 
shading. Don't be afraid to use multiple different colors. Don't be afraid to use colors that are brighter, lighter, and even maybe a little different shade than what your um, your print has. But that let that kind of be be your guide. So I would continue on with this. I would change my thread color. I would do more decorative in there. You know, kind of um, go at your own pace and. Don't be afraid to do just a little bit at a time. I'm going to do just another little area here just so that you can see. Oh, I think my thread came unthreaded here. Let's get that threaded back up. Um, don't be afraid to, like I said, go back in and add to it and um, you know, make, it, make it so that you're happy with it. But what I really want you to see is that this is so easy that even if you're a pure beginner and you've never done any type of free motion work, you can do this. It's really, really simple. Just back and forth, straight stitch, just sketching in a little bit of color there. Now, I'll tell you, on, a, on this particular project, which I decided to, to turn into a pillow, you could also consider doing this on other, other projects. Um, this would be a really fun technique to do on the back of a jean jacket. Again, you can add the, the stuffing if you want. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute here. Or you can leave it flat like I did on the other uh, pillow panel. Your choice. So let's take a look at one that I've already got done, and that would be this one here. Okay, so you can see I sketched in the gray, a little bit of green, a little bit of beige. And now what I need to do is remove all of this tearaway stabilizer. And when I do this, I want to show you one important step that I probably should have mentioned at the beginning. And that is that I have added interfacing to this fabric. So that is also going to add a little bit of body, but it's also going to do one more thing. It's going to add a little bit more ravel resistance because my next step is I would take, you know, once I've um, got that all decorated, you could see a couple different birds with the um, stabilizer all torn away. I'm going to now trim really, really close to that motif. So that interfacing is going to help keep that fabric from raveling. But if you have fabric that really does fray quite a bit, consider using a, a seam sealant to um, go all around that raw edge and keep that a little bit more secure. OK, so now I'm going to grab my, my pillow panel piece. And I want to just show you real quick how I prepared this. I like to make pillows that have a little bit of an extra padding on the front. So very often, I will take my home decor fabric and I will take fusible fleece, which is a very thin type of batting with a fusible on it, and I will put that against the wrong side and fuse that in place to my whole pillow panel front. So this is just a little, little sample piece. Okay, I'm gonna now change my foot, and I'm gonna go back to a regular presser foot. What I'm gonna need to do next is attach that applique with a simple zigzag stitch. Now, at this point, you could consider using a decorative foot, the type that has like an open toe or a clear view. Um, just to make it quick and easy today, I'm just going to use the regular standard um, sewing foot, which can do straight and zigzag sewing. Okay. I want to cancel out my free motion because that will raise the presser or the, um, the um, feed dogs rather back up when I raise the, the presser foot. And when I take one stitch with the machine, those feed dogs will now come up. So if you've done that and your feed dogs stay down, they don't come back up until you take, until you take a stitch. And I want to take a minute just to uh, tell you a little bit more about the foot while it's off here so that you can see it. This foot, again, it's designed to screw on. It's designed to be spring-loaded so that when it's on the machine, it will actually jump a little bit. It's got that nice open toe. If you are accustomed to doing machine embroidery, whatever you do, don't confuse this with your machine embroidery foot because they are not interchangeable. So they are two completely separate, different feet. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply select a very narrow zigzag. So I'm going to select a zigzag stitch, and I'm going to go really narrow on the length, usually about a 2.0. And I'm going to space that out just a little bit to about 2.0 there. And I'm just going to go along the raw edge. You would want to use matching thread because that would blend right in to your whatever color your background fabric is. Just swirl that around. When you get to a point, you want to stop and pivot. If you've got a pointed edge, you want to pivot on the outside. Sometimes it's good to take one stitch at a time with needle up, needle down. 
and then pivot again with that on the outside. Okay, and I'm gonna go around just a little bit of spacing there. Okay, I'm gonna take this out, and I wanna show you what I've done so far. Okay, I've done a large area of that um, little bird. Now it's time to stuff it. So I'm gonna take my stuffing, and I like to use a special uh, stuffing, it's called cluster fill. It's very different from regular poly type fill. It's done almost in like little beads. So you can take small amounts at a time, and we can feed that right in. We need a little opening. Okay, I can push some of that in with my fingers, but if you're trying to get into pointed areas, you may want to use a chopstick, even the uh, eraser end of a, of a pencil works. But just to get that in, I want to stuff that um, all in those areas that are small. I want to get some, uh, some, some of that detail puffed out. Okay, get as much as you can in there. And you're gonna get to a point where it's just gonna be, it, it's enough because you gotta get this back under the machine. So don't overstuff it. You're just trying to create a little bit of um, texture and a little dimension. There, I think I had a little bit too much in there. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of that out because you don't want your pillow to be too, too puffy. You wanna um, keep that a little bit on the, on the flatter side. Okay, and then I'm just gonna meet up right where I left off. Go back around there. See if I can get around this whole little foot there. And you don't have to stuff every area, so don't, you know, don't think that it's got to be entirely like that. Just that little bit of extra dimension in some areas that you want to accent is going to do it just fine. So just keep pushing that in. Make sure all of that batting is tucked to the inside. You don't want any of that to show. Pick a thread color. You may want to do a sample with this. You know, that's part of the fun of buying that home decor fabric with all those different motifs. You might be like me and you just have trouble figuring out which pretty birds are really motifs you want to use. Flowers, um, you can add uh, leaf accent stems. There's just all kinds of different, different types of home decor fabrics out there. If you choose to use something a little bit lighter, then consider, um, you know, that's an option as well, but make sure that you use an interfacing that beefs that up a little bit. You want that to be pretty good weight. So I'm right at the end there now. I'm gonna tie that stitch off. And just clip that little tail where I started. And move this extra stuffing out of the way. And there you could see my beautiful bird. Get rid of that little extra tail there. Perfect and ready to sew on my pillow. So let me hop back up to the pillow just for a minute and show you just a little bit how I finished it. I wanted to tie the color scheme together, so I just cut some strips of fabric, sewed them right along the edge, so just kind of you know brought that little color back, created uh, an envelope closure on the back, just two simple flat pieces overlapped, put it right sides together, turned it right side out, put a pillow form in there, and I'm perfectly ready to redecorate with my beautiful free motion Trapunto three-dimensional pillow. I hope you enjoyed this technique and visit the website. We're gonna have complete instructions for you so you can make your own beautiful pillow.